This is the first in um, could be a series of tutorials about something called a rigid body and not just a rigid body and uh, I'm talking about all the parameters and components and things that are related to it like uh, collisions and uh, collision detection and so on. So everything we did so far had to do with the look of what we see through the camera, uh, materials and lights and shapes and so on. This Now we're going to start talking about the behavior, the physicality of those objects, making them behave as if they are in a real world that obeys the rules of physics. So let me start by creating a cube. Here's a cube. Let's get a little closer. Let's also get the camera closer. It's right now 10 meters behind let me get it closer move it a little this way so there's more room to the side so i move the camera another cube um let me also create let's say a sphere move that sphere to be a little beside the cube right now i'm looking at the whole thing from above from y we turn off the gizmos so we got the sphere sitting next to the cube now if I play, which puts it into a simulation mode, what it would look like to the user. Even during play, I can simulate what would happen if, for instance, the sphere would move and touch the cube. And as you can see right now, it's as if they both ignore each other physically. They go each other like air, like butter, like, you know, whatever you want. Um, by the way, if I leave it this way and I stop, Everything goes back exactly to the way it was before I hit play. What I'm trying to hit, to say is that while we are in play, any changes we make are not saved. Uh, that's very important to remember. It's a good thing and a bad thing. Um, you can experiment. You can change. You can uh, see say you know what if I changed you know parameters here and here and here uh, while it's playing to test what it could do. But as soon as you hit uh, stop or come out of play, all those changes are reverted um, back to the way they were, uh, you know, the minute before or the second before you hit play. So it went back to the sphere and the cube sitting side by side. In order for them to start behaving like they are real objects, I have to give each one of them a component called rigid body. So I selected the cube and in the inspector under all the things the cube has, notice that it already has something called box collider. I'll talk about that in a second. I will add component. And right now it already says rigid body because that's the last thing I uh, searched for, but usually it would say, it just would show, you know, things in alphabetical order. And just by typing R, I, it should already give you a hint or bring up rigid body. Not rigid body 2D, but we're in the 3D world, so rigid body. And it adds a component called rigid body. Um, let me talk about that box collider for a second. That box collider, which is added automatically to a cube, because a cube is a box, um, is an invisible boundary area that checks when things are colliding, when things are touching. By default, if I click Edit Collider and I rotate a little bit, you can see that it's an, like an invisible boundary around the cube. I can edit it to be bigger or smaller than the cube. In certain cases, for instance, you want the collider of a, a, of a game object to be a little bigger than the visual uh, of the game object. So it kind of, you know, touches before it looks like it touches. Uh, but in most cases, we want the collider to be exactly as big as what we see. It's like the invisible, you know, um, force field around it that detects where the things are touching or not. So I'm going to undo all my changes and it's back to just being centered and exactly the size of the box and so on back to the rigid body when i added the rigid body i haven't set, changed any of its uh, default parameters which means by the way let's look at it the right way 
like this. Let's look at it the same way the camera does. Turn it around. And I'm holding Option, or if it was, you know, Windows Alt. When I press play, look at what happens to that cube. Woo, it fell down into oblivion because right now there's nothing underneath it. Why did it fall? Because we told it to obey the rules of physics by adding rigid body to it. We told it that it has a default one unit of a mass, which means like, you know, normal Earth gravity. Um, we'll talk about drag in a few seconds. But the main thing is that we told it, just like anything on this planet, it obeys the laws of gravity, use gravity. If we uncheck that, it still has a rigid body, but when I play for right now, it will not fall. Is that enough to start making these objects interact with each other? No, it's not, because... What am I moving? I want to move not the camera, but the sphere. When I move the sphere, the sphere has no rigid body. So, see what it did, by the way? Uh, let me add a rigid body also to the uh, sphere. Or actually, I won't. What I actually uh, demonstrated is the fact that in order to detect collision, only one of the objects needs to have a rigid body. That's very helpful. If they both have a rigid body, let me add a rigid body to this and also make it ignore gravity, otherwise it will fall, and play. Now they simply push each other. They don't fly in the air. I mean, they kind of do, but not as much. Um, because they both have a rigid body. But even before, even if I remove, right click, remove the rigid body from the sphere, the fact that the sphere has a collider and the box has a collider and at least one of them has a rigid body, it's enough to detect collision. By the way, you notice that sometimes it does go through it and sometimes it doesn't, and that has to do with the mode of the detection of the collision, which is, let me go back to the box, right now the mode is called discrete, which means it detects only like the initial touch. I can also change it to be continuous, continuous dynamic, whatever works. Um, continuous dynamic means that it continuously... Uh, uh, um, detects if any part of the sphere, if any part of another body has touched it and reacts accordingly. And right now, here it is. Cool. Um, but this is something that we're going to cover better or this is something we're going to experiment better when we have actual game objects that are uh, interacting with each other. Um, so now these two bodies are, they both have a rigid body. Let me actually add to the sphere a rigid body. So they both act like they belong in um, real space. And now let me add the gravity back to them. That means that when I play, they will both fall. So if we want them not to fall, we got to give them a floor. So let's do this. Grab both of them bring them up because right now they're at y0 they're at floor level but i'm going to bring them about two meters up in the air so that means that i can create a plane floor let's make that plane 10 by 10. remember planes are already 10 by 10 so you always have to add a zero so if the scale of the plane is one by one that means it's 10 meters by 10 meters or 10 units by 10 units so if i make it 10 by 10 that's 10 times bigger that's 100. so right now it's like you know a floor that's 100 meters by 100 meters um the plane already has a mesh collider uh, which means it will already detect if things are touching it so if i play it should fall on the floor and it does. But again, if we're trying to mimic reality, let me stop um, and save. When things fall to the floor, they don't just fall like, you know, like dead weight. 
uh, unless they're really, really heavy and not bouncy. In order to make them behave like there's a little bit of bounce to them, what we need to add to them is something called a physics material. In other words, every material on this world, in this world, from wood to rubber to you know uh, a paper bag, reacts a little differently when it hits another object. It has a different bounciness and um, a different reaction. So to add a physics uh, material, I what I will do first is I will go to my assets and I think what would be a good thing is to create a new folder. It's always a good idea to organize things into folders. And you could call it materials or I will call it Fizz materials. And this is where I'm going to organize and create all my physics materials. In that folder, I can right click, create, and not a regular material, but a physics material. I will name it, let's call it uh, Bouncy. And I will double click on it. And the materials don't have too many. Um, parameters. They got two kinds of friction. What's really friction? Friction is what makes it lose momentum, right? Uh, if you um, run and then all of a sudden you hit a lot of friction, it slows you down. So 0 0.6 means that it would lose 60% of its energy when it grinds across something. Static friction means it'll lose 60% of its energy when it simply touches something, hits something. So the lower the friction, the more bouncy it's gonna be. So I'm gonna give it very low friction, like 0 0.1, both on static and dynamic. Then the most important parameter is called bounciness, and it's scaled from zero to one. Bounciness zero means that it would lose all of its energy when it hits the floor, just like we had before. It means it would lose everything, no uh, um, inertia whatsoever. On the other hand, bounciness one means that it would lose nothing. It would just keep on bouncing forever. Um, because it would lose none of its energy. That is something we don't see in real life, right? When we bounce a ball, even the bounciest rubber ball doesn't bounce exactly back to where it came from. It loses a little bit of its energy. So let's make it 0 0.95. Very bouncy, but still within the you know what we know from the realm of physics. Then friction combine and bounce combine are about combining the bounciness and the friction of the two things that are hitting. So I'm going to make friction minimum and bounce maximum. In other words, when two things are bouncing against each other, it will use the bounciness of the biggest, of the bigger bounce, of the bouncier of the two. Uh, and we can also play around with this to get you know different behaviors that we want. Now, as I play, nothing changed. Why? because I haven't assigned this physics material to any of my objects. So what I can do is actually click the cube, and it's not part of the rigid body, it's part of the box collider. Part of whatever collider is assigned to that object. I'm saying, hey, when someone collides you, I want you to behave like a physics material. Click that little dot, and I have two of them because I created the one before I started this video, but I think this one is the one I want. Let me actually go back and delete the earlier one so I know that I'm using only the one I just created. Yep. And the sphere will have a bouncy material. And the plane, although it doesn't have a rigid body, it does have a mesh collider, so that means it will interact with things bouncing against it, so I can give it also the bouncy. What does that really mean? That right now, the cube, the sphere, and the floor are made of really, really bouncy, rubbery material. Let's see how that works. Very bouncy. You see how it will almost never end. Why would it, wouldn't it end, or it ends very, very slowly? Because we gave this material very little friction and a lot of bounciness. So for instance, if I reduce its bounciness, 
it loses all the energy. If I give it back, it won't come back because it's already lost all the energy. Um, but what I can is stop and give it bounciness of one and friction of zero and static friction of zero. That in uh, combined friction minimum, bounce maximum. Now it's the bounciest material in the world. And look at what will happen. It's actually bouncing a little higher each time. Why is it bouncing higher? Which means it's actually gaining energy because the bounce combined is maximum. It's actually combining the bounce of the floor and what it's hitting. If I change the bounce combined to minimum, it'll start coming down. Or if I change the bounciness to something less than one. That's a lot more realistic. Um, other things that will influence the movement are um, if I stop, then I go back, let's say, to the cube. Let's say I can make him look a uh, 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 behave a little differently. In the rigid body, there's something called mass. What if I made that cube, for instance, very light? Instead of mass one, mass zero point zero one, a hundredth of what it is. Would that influence it? Let's see. So everything else is the same, except the cube is a lot lighter. It's like uh, hollow. No, it doesn't. That's what, you know, Galileo back in the 14th century discovered, that objects fall exactly at the same speed, no matter what their um, weight is. A small stone and a large stone falls to the ground exactly the same speed. They hit the ground at different forces, but they don't travel, you know, the light one doesn't travel faster. Um, what, what will influence, the, what the mass will influence is the interaction between them so once they do fall on the floor, if I'm able to catch one of them and push, it'll be easier to push a lighter object. Um, I'm going to stop the um, tutorial at this point, and maybe in the next part, I want to show you a nice trick that has to do with rigid body and um, colliders.